Welcome to the Average Australian Podcast. Oh, what a fabulous rally from Tim Cahill. You will not see a better goal than that at the World Cup this year. Oh, Big great save. save again by it's Schwarzer. It's a huge save. Cahill. Cahill. Tim Cahill has done it again. My drop for four to roll in. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Average Australian Football Podcast. This is episode 22 and we are back to discuss everything A-League related. There was of course the uh, big result that may have or should have determined the uh, Premier Plate for this season. There's also the EPL, uh, there's the Champions League, some pretty interesting results with some English clubs and of course there's the Socceroos announcement that we'll discuss. So to discuss all of that and much much more, I am joined once again by Eden. Eden, welcome back. Hey, how are you, man? Not bad, yourself? Yeah, doing good, doing good. Um, big week in football once again. It is, it is. Did you think the... Uh, uh, well, I don't know where we'll start. I guess we'll, let's let's start with Sydney. Do you think the um, the game matched up to the hype? Uh, not really. Um, it wasn't, you know, I think it was just Sydney, again, just showing their dominance um, and pretty much, I think, sealing the title now and probably um, sealing their status as favourites for the grand final as well. Um, I still probably, going into that last few rounds, I still probably had doubts over whether Sydney would be able to win the grand final um, because of the way that Melbourne City and Victory play a bit more maybe exciting attacking football. But over the last two weeks, they've knocked off City, they've knocked off Victory um, and done it fairly comfortably. I think that's pretty much it for, for the season now, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. Um, we'll come back to that game in a little bit more detail in a second. But um, I suppose just to go through some news, um, I don't want to talk about the FFA again like we always no, do. But, no, um, no, we'll give it a rest this week. I just found it kind of weird that they rejected the bid by Wellington and Newcastle to have the um, their fixture coming up rescheduled. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I thought. I mean, I think what happened there was obviously with now you've got the split round this weekend as well. Um, yeah, they just seem to be a bit. It's typical, weird like, to like um, try to help out the Asian Champions League teams, but not help out your international team. Yeah, and, and, and Wellington always pay the price for that. Um, but yeah, I just think, you know, FFA, sometimes they, I don't know, they, they just refuse to budge on stupid stuff like that and you just question it. But look, I think we're not going to no, no, get into just, it. I found it interesting, right? Like, no, and, and yeah, I think we'll give, them a, we'll give them a break this week and then next week we'll just double down and fully unload. <laughs> Have you, you got any... Um... Any thoughts or um, impressions about the Southern Sydney expansion? Like, I'm not from Sydney. I know you haven't been there that too long, but um, I saw a few um, criticism about, like, Wollongong sort of being pushed out if this happens. What's your, like, overall view on, like, Southern Sydney team coming in and then, like, having three Sydney-based teams, New South Wales-based teams in, like, a a 12-league team competition? Yeah, it's weird because... um... This one's really kind of. I mean, it's been on. It's been talked about for a while. But what I didn't know was that Les Murray and Craig Foster from SBS were kind of like spearheading it. Um, Do you think that's a bit I, impartial? Well, a little bit. Um, but look, they're they're football people, you know, and they've been, in, uh, you know, Les Murray's been involved in football commentary for a long, long time, and and Craig Foster's been an ex soccer and all that sort of stuff. So I don't have a problem with that, but um, I don't know if it's the best bid. It seems like they kind of want to encapsulate that whole Southern Sydney region, and it's very and segmented, right? Well, but not yeah, it's yeah, exactly. And so you know, then they trying to bring in Wollongong as well, and Wollongong always see themselves as a very sort of distinct region that's not really part of Sydney. It is Wollongong. And you look at back at the old NSL, Wollongong Wolves, I mean, that was a pretty legendary team. Um, Big rivalry, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and, and just to have, again, Southern Sydney that's like covers all these different regions, plays at different home grounds and stuff like that. Like, I don't know if that's the right, um, bid, but it seems like they're backed by a big Chinese company. I think like a Chinese property company yeah, who's like huge. committed like twelve mil in cash already. So, I mean, you can't, you know, when, when you see that kind of money, um, that's important. Um, but what happens know, when they realise they can't even spend that money on the club? 
Well, and, and not only that, but what's also interesting is that the, the news about all these bids keeps coming out, but FFA have pretty much just put a hold on it and just said, no, we're not ready, we're not doing it, we're not even going to think about it. And yet you've got all these like consortiums and clubs and, and things that are like ready to go, like South Melbourne, now you've got South Sydney, there's probably a couple of other bids in the pipeline, you know, there's always been like the Hobart one or whatever, Geelong. Like, the, these people still want to put money in and get involved, and the FFA is just like, shut it down, because, look, looks like we're going to go into an FFA rant again here, I'm, I can feel it coming, but through through a lack of planning and, and all this sort of stuff and not being ready, whereas, you know, they've had to shut it down, whereas, like, you know, the, the bids are there, so, I don't know, it's, it's interesting, I think... When you see this kind of money, it's hard to hard to refuse. And if these clubs the are thing, ready to go, let, let's go. The whole thing to me feels unnatural. Like they're unnaturally stopping growth and progression because they're not structurally ready. And I just don't like it without going into an FFA yeah. rant. It's just, it just feels <laughs> very unnatural at the moment. Yeah, and look, they've said, you know, the whole structure needs to change. Well, yeah. that's what the clubs and everybody's been calling out for, for a long, long time. So, you know, I think it's uh, – we'll see what's hap- is going to happen. Like, There's a lot of steam building on uh, behind these bids, so I think we'll be hearing more about it in, in the near future, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think um, that this topic of conversation is ever going to quit until the no. teams are in, so I mean, this is <laughs> to be continued indefinitely. It's just going to do our head in. Um, what do you make of the, the Socceroos announcement? Obviously, some big uh, A-League surprises. Um, yep. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make this short. I think it was a 23-man squad. Um, yep. But any overall impressions about who's been named, who hasn't? A couple of interesting ones. Um, Reese Williams. Wow. Yeah. Just like straight back into it. <laughs> You're um, welcome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if... You know, I mean, he's definitely over the last few weeks shown glimpses of some of his best. And don't forget, he was a Premier League quality player um, and he's certainly not, you know, over the hill or anything like that. So if he can get back to some of that best form, then it would definitely be a soccer who's first 11. How do you think Danny Vukovic is from having a, a, being another first try? Yeah, I feel bad for him because he's like in career best he form is. at the moment. Um, I guess the thing our, for him is Matty Ryan sort of gains some form back. Well, and that's and that's what I was going to say. I feel so bad for him because the rest of our keepers are really, really good at the moment. So you got obviously Matt Ryan's gone back to Belgium. He's like slotted straight back in. And you in got Europe um, competition, yeah, yeah, and and uh, the Lang- Langerak is also back and playing um, and playing still well. Cool. Yeah, is he actually and playing? Is he? Okay. I think so. I think he's getting game time. And then the third one, the one that probably doesn't get enough credit, is Brad Jones. Yeah, yeah. He's at fine, is he at Feyenoord? I mean, he's in Eredivisie, and he was like, he's on fire. He's like kept like a record number of clean sheets for the season. He's like heading to be um, keeper of the season in the Eredivisie. Yeah, like he's come from nowhere. Um, so I feel bad for, for Vukovic because he's just been he's so good. Um, and all of a sudden there's like at least three keepers ahead of him. So I still think he's, he's good cover. Um, personally, I don't good see, um, like t- people like, uh, Riley McGree. It's like, I think it's more like a, um, it's a reward yeah, for a just reward. like, and give him a bit of a taste of being in the squad. But definitely, I mean, for me, R- Reese Williams was a, was a big surprise. Um, and the big surprise for me was like Matthew Lecky, like Robbie Cruz. What have they done? Yeah, I think they just kind of we just have to pick them because we've got no one else. Yeah. But you know, you've got a question like how long they've got left when you've got guys like Taggart and McLaren both not picked. Exactly. Right. Um, and you know, Lecky and you know, Postecoglou always says he goes on on form, not on on the name. Well, Lecky and and Cruz have got to be starting to you know wear out their, any goodwill they've got from Postecoglou because they're just not doing much. No, so. Not, yeah. Uh, if if McLaren and Taggart were maybe just a bit hotter at the moment, um, although Taggart, I don't know how much more he can do. I mean, he's he's getting fantastic service, but he's finishing it all off. So I, um, honestly, I would almost put him in over Cahill. Not that I think they're direct competition to each other in the squad, but like um, he does a similar role. I feel like in terms oh, of yeah. impact. Yeah, look, I mean, Cahill, you just got to have just because he's the soccer who's he's, stalwart yeah, now. Socceroos, like, right? yeah, we yeah. we need one of those, and if things get tough, he's the guy that can make something happen. So, yeah, but but yeah, you're right, Taggart. Um, I think he's red hot, and his club forms proved he can be an impact player. That's right. Yeah. I just don't, you know, obviously stepping up to the international stage is is pretty difficult, but. Uh, 
I would have um, I would have thought he might have made it. And the other one I thought that might have uh, made it would have been Brillante. Um, yeah. So don't you think it's you know, hard for Ange though? Because like these are such crucial games. Like you can't drop them. And like as much as you see the A League players in form, like do you trust them internationally? Like you sort of <sighs> referenced it. Like can you afford to not pick your usual you know winners? I guess. At- well, and this is a thing. So guys like Cruz and Lecky, you know, they've been in the soccer setup. Yeah. So even though they might not have been playing much, you, you know, know at you least, they, yeah. yeah, and they should be able to at least perform to a certain level. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of that. And like you said, these are crucial qualifiers coming a, up because come up we're soon as well, twenty third. Yeah, yeah, and we're in a bit of bit of strife, so we're we're really up against it. I mean, it worries me where the goals are going to come from, yeah, to be honest. Too, yeah. Um, yeah, and and the midfield doesn't look amazing. I mean, Reese Williams is there. You know, we've got Mark Milligan, um, Matt Mackay's being brought in as well. He's always pretty good. Um, but you think you had a knuckle start? You'd have to. I mean, he's he's back to some of his best yeah. um, for for Villa now. I mean, I think he was kind of written off after he got cut from Palace, um, and he didn't really have the best start. Um, but he's he's come really good. Um, so I think you know he's he's important for us. Um, Brillante still, I thought would have been would have been an important one, um, but you know. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how this pans out because a lot of our guys still aren't doing much. You know, we've got Trent Sainsbury in the back line there. Sure, he's heading to Milan, <laughs> but he hasn't played for a while. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, Reese Williams, again, you know, he's he's starting to pick up some form, but he's a long way off. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, Brad Smith, you know, he's, he's doing all right, but I don't think he's getting that much game Not time. Lately, no. Um, Mark Milligan's playing in UAE. Um, uh, Aaron Moy, have, you know, as good as Aaron Moy is, haven't really seen him delivering big games before. Um, and then you look up front. I mean, Tommy Juric has been in some good form in Switzerland. He scored um, recently, yeah, last week. I think he's got a double in the Swiss Cup or yeah. something like that. So he's been all right. Um, and Troisi's in pretty good form in the A League. So and Craig Goodwin actually also in in the Netherlands. So we do have a couple of players in, in good form, but these are going to be tough qualifiers, man. This is massive, and and uh, who who Ange picks in that first eleven, I think, is going to be huge. Yeah, I'm not confident to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I've got I'm, a bad I'm, feeling about this qualification. I'm, I'm a bit worried. I I am. Um, and and this is the thing, you know, like. Ange Postacoglu came in and and at the World Cup and then after that and we started playing some good football and and whatnot. But I mean, even he was the first to point out he didn't get us to the last World Cup. No. Um, and as much maligned as Holger Osiek and and Pim Verbeek before him were for for some not so great football, they got us to two World exactly. Cups through some tough groups and now. Ange has got to do that. And... I find it difficult to um, rate Ange because, like, I like him as a person. I think he's very approachable. I like what he does for Fox Sports. I think he explains himself well. But I think um, in the big games, tactically, we seem a little bit naive. And I'm not sure yep. if, like, I understand him because, to be honest, our players, like you said, aren't playing club football. So, I mean, you can't point the finger directly at Ange because, I mean, these players have to, like, work out what they're, what's their important, right? The money or the, the playing. Well, yeah, he's called the players out on that. But, yeah. uh, but I agree with you. That's a very good point, the naivety, because he's very much all about the style and, is, and yeah. sort of thing. And, and at some point, you know, these guys like Pim Verbeek and Holger Osik, they knew, look, you just got to go there and, and grind it out yeah. sometimes because, you know, it would of course it would be awesome if we could run rings around, um, you know, these these teams. But the World Cup qualifying, like it's, it's do or die. And... That's the thing you realize, like, you know, we'll go to a country like, you know, Thailand or or wherever or somewhere in the Middle East or whatever it is. And you see, like, when other countries, the passion that they have for football, which like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. life and death for those countries. Like, they just play with, and 
with with a passion that sometimes maybe we don't get, and so they'll do whatever it takes to to get over the line. And we're they're trying to play sexy football. Yeah. Well, sometimes that's not Especially the time on for these, that. Like very awful pitches. Like sometimes you just got to keep it basic with tactics, and you know you let your quality shine. But that's that's right. And if you got to if you got to hoof it to Cahill for a header, then well, you know it's yeah. just you got to do it. Yeah. I think this um Confed Cup coming up is going to be getting real embarrassing. I think it's going yeah. to be one of our low points in like a, a a season of low points in some respects. Yeah, um, well, look, I mean, that's going to be that's going to tell us where we're at. Yeah, um, to, and like you said, if the top um, yeah, if if Bosnia and Rudan thought that um, the ACL performance was <laughs> poor, uh, this, I mean, this, prelude, this could I be think. yeah, this yeah. could be this this could really tell us where we're at. Yeah, um, so. And if if results don't go well, then I think Postecoglou is going to be under a bit of pressure. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think if he does qualify, there's no certainty he's going to be the manager for the World Cup. I don't think, but um, no, it'll be interesting absolutely. what happens. Um, yep. Just going back to the A League. Um, with Sydney Melbourne victory, are you? Um, everyone's sort of saying that the title is Sydney's. There's no question it isn't, right? Well, I think they need, you know, theoretically, it's still possible for victory. I think they need, yeah, maybe another three points or four points or something like that. But I think it's pretty much all, all but over. Um, Any concerns with victory? What happens now for the rest of the season for them? I mean, they're pretty comfortable in second now, aren't they? I think they're pretty comfortable in second. They're not really under threat. So, so. No, nine points. That's that's plenty, right? I think so. So I think those two spots are almost wrapped up. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how they play out the rest of the season now with one eye on the finals. I mean, Sydney at least have the motivation of wanting to really, you know, the get as many record, points as yeah. they can. Yeah, but finishing second, like how much motivation do you have there? But I think uh, the, the last couple of weeks have just confirmed Sydney as, as um, just being too hard to, to beat. They're just too hard to break down. Um, and if they get the first goal, it's it's all over almost it always. Does feel like that, yeah. Um, what do you make of like the race for the top four? Like it's um on the night, Perth Glory's comeback I thought was good. Um, it was I th- impressive. I thought they had plenty of chances to win it. They probably should yep. have, especially the last yep. twenty minutes. Yeah. Um, but when you look at, I thought like, I'll just cover all three games really quickly. Like I thought, Melm City were lucky. Yep. Oh, big time. And yeah, big time. The referee, like, like I don't know. Um, like Hoffman, the red card for Brisbane, Newcastle game. Like yep. I, I thought the scent, like he's an idiot for doing that. But yeah. I think collectively, when you put the two, uh, two yellow cards together, it's so harsh to send a player off for those two offenses. I think so. Um, and it's had a huge impact on the top six, like a massive impact. Both of the Melbourne City Mariners game, the Newcastle Brisbane game were affected by referee decisions. And I question both in some respects, yeah. not the, the red card for Izzo, because that was definitely, that was, that was definitely, but the, the penalty not given that changes the whole landscape of the game. Oh, look, yeah, I think both Jets and Mariners were hard, hard done by, probably even robbed, you yeah. could say. Um, and yeah, especially that Mariners one, you know, and then, um, when, when City go down the other end and, and, and own goal and all of a sudden it's 2 nil. I mean, that really. Especially what Paul Ocon's doing, right? Like, it's so disappointing for, like, as a neutral to watch them. Like, yeah. they're so close to making a top six, like, against yeah. the odds, and then this happens, and just like, well, what can they do? That's right, and that's kind of what always happens to those lower teams, is that those decisions always seem to go against them. Um, but, you know, they, they had City on, on the, ropes. the ropes for a little they bit there, so, did, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give them credit for that. Um, City were kind of, yeah, back to their back to their old ways. I mean, Fauna Roli scored a cracker at the start did, yeah. and then again, they just fell away, fell to pieces and yeah, they, they kind of got out of jail with that um, red card there in the end and then, you know, they didn't look back but even then, 3-2, um, yeah, still the same old story for, for the Melbourne City, I think. What do you think of the Hoffman? Like, I know I mentioned that it's um, collectively, it was not a good call. But um, you're saying about, I know you saw in your article, you said about dissent, the player can have no arguments. But what do you make of, like, the second yellow card? Did you say that? Yeah, soft. Um, um, Soft, and then, you know, like you said again, for the Jets... I think, you know, with with the coach getting sent off and stuff like that, I think that was a little bit of frustration at his team as well because they've had chances now to get back into the six and they just haven't been able to do it. What's happened um, to them creatively, right? Like, yeah. like Naboo scored from the penalty spot, but I mean, he and Nordstrand, they've sort of like veered off a cliff almost in terms of like it's creative dried up. output. Yeah. It has. It's really dried up and I guess it's all off the back of Naboo's sort of gone a little bit quiet and the whole team's just fallen away, I think. 
Um, and that's maybe where a little bit of that frustration for the manager was coming from. But, you know, you, you look at the Jets and the Mariners, I'd rather have both of those two in the top six, or at least one of those in the top six than the Wanderers at the moment. Well, let's talk or- about Newcastle Jets, right? This is their fixtures for the remaining in the season, right? They play Melbourne mm. City at, uh, in Melbourne. They play mm. Wellington in New Zealand at Westpac Stadium. They play the Wanderers at home. They play yep. Central Coast Mariners away, and they play Sydney FC away. Like, that is wow. a tough... That's tough a tough running. fixture. Yeah, that's that's very tough. So, you know, I think they might have they might have missed it. I give them um, potentially it maybe nine points, which would yeah. put them to thirty one. And yeah. I mean, you're asking the Wanderers not to pick up six more points. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it's tough, and and that's why I think you know the Jets. It's it's almost slipped away a little bit for them now. I mean. Um, they they look like they were on a bit of a roll, um, and like you said, I don't know, I can't really put my finger on it except that it's just gone gone bad for them. Um, but to me, I think them or the Mariners are still a more exciting prospect than the Wanderers or the Phoenix. Do you um what are your what's your view on the the Perth draw? Do you think it's two missed points because you look at Brisbane and City both ahead now in one point? Um, I haven't looked at the fixtures of all three clubs to be fair. But I know Perth played Melbourne Victory away. I mean, so if you lose that and um, Brisbane play Adelaide and the uh, Melbourne City, they play Newcastle Jets, right? So if yeah. both teams win, that goes to four. And that's a pretty significant lead, right? With like four or five games to go. Oh, look, I mean, I rate Glory's comeback because that showed a bit of strength um, for you know, them question, to... question, three goals conceded again. Well, and then, but, you know, that goes to the whole point of why were they 3-0 three, three nil down to begin with. We um, did call it. Yeah, 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 and it's it's just one of those kind of performances from both of those sides. Like when it's, you know, you look at sometimes like Barbarossa's for Wellington and he's on fire and then other times he just he's just horrible. Along, and, yeah. But, you know, I'll give, I'll give the Corey credit for at least coming back. I mean, Keo's goal was superb. It definitely was. Castro's um, free kick was incredible. Yeah, well, and Castro again, you know. But for, it could have easily ended up 3-0 because the glory just could have put their heads down. But I thought they, they fought back and they showed some spine there. And, look, they're, they're right in it now. I mean, again. I thought again, the performance by uh, Roy Christian was the best I've seen him all season, to be honest. Yeah. He, he's red hot and he's probably carried the Phoenix for, for most of the season. Um, he's, again, one of those players that if he was somewhere else, he'd be getting a lot more plaudits. But um, just a typical performance from both of those two sides, I thought. That's that's just what they've been all season. And look, that's the only thing that's holding the glory back is, again, they just cannot stop the goals. No. They can score them. like And they, they just score like so well but if you can't keep them out like you know you're not you're not going to have much chance i just looked at the rest of their fixtures this is how difficult it is for perth glory to me i think a home final is vital i yeah. think if they finish fifth or sixth they're in trouble but this is their the rest of their games victory away yep sydney fc at home wow adelaide united away yep brisbane at home mm-hmm. melbourne city at home wow so i mean they play what four they play the top all six they play all the sides above them yeah they don't play and, anyone and below them except for Adelaide wow. United. Wow. Well, look, I mean, and then that, that's the test then. I mean, if they're going to make the finals and do some damage, they've got to play those sides anyway. Um, and look, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a chance in Melbourne this this weekend. Yeah, so I think I. that's yeah. a that's a cracking game, I think, on Saturday night. That's going to be a ripper. Um, a victory against Glory. I think the, just Castro is just uh, red fire. hot, just yeah. absolutely yeah. on fire. Um, targets on fire, and you know Keo's been quiet, but he's still shown he he's still a clinical finisher when he's when he gets his chances. Um, victory, got re- victory, a little weird at the moment, aren't they? Like um, Ingham had the best chances for victory against Sydney. Um, two big chances should have scored, uh, but yeah. like Berishar and um, Rojas were pretty quiet. Yeah, Berishar's uh, yeah was a little bit off the boil. Uh, Rojas didn't do much, and I just thought in that kind of. Uh, game i just thought this you know we would see something amazing from victory yeah. um but I, I feel like they lacked a little bit of intensity i mean definitely sydney shut them out um but i just thought we were going to see a little bit more from the victory there but i think that's a little bit of um sydney just being too good um and really controlling the game but maybe victory being a little bit flat as well i, I give glory a big chance this weekend to at least pick up a point from from there yeah we'll go into that game in a second what do you make of the wanderers Ugh. can't score again <laughs> 
Horrible. Um, I think we've said the whole season they're consistently missing a quality uh, number nine, a striker. Oh, yeah. And, no. um, I mean, it's they've essentially shot themselves in the foot and now trying to hobble to the hospital, right? Yeah, and, and for some somehow they're still actually in the top six, and that's what baffles me. I mean, yeah, they've got ten draws. Yeah. Um, but I think they 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 should be way lower on the ladder. Like they they're not. I don't know. They they play good football at times, but like you said, to not have a striker. Um, I, I mean, Tony Popovich must be deluded when he was telling Bozza that, that they were going to make the grand final. Still, I mean, it's just been a it's just been a write off of a season for them. And if Adelaide United were were a better side themselves, they should, probably should have punished the Wanderers big time. Um, I just think horrible season for them. Um, Do you think they make the top six? I can run you through the fixtures if you want. Yeah, let's let's have a look at who they've got. Yeah, they play Wellington at home. Yep. Uh, they play Melbourne City at home. They travel mm. to Newcastle to play the Jets. Yeah. They play Victory at home, and mm. they travel to Adelaide uh, to finish off the season. So I mean, there's some significant chances for points, especially yeah. against Wellington and Adelaide at uh, both one game yeah. away, one at home. Yeah. So, so I think that's six points, which theoretically puts them above Newcastle without too much effort. That's right, and certainly an easier run than the than the glory have. Not that's for sure. Yeah. Um, look, I think the Wanderers might. Yeah, on on the back of that, they might make it. And you know, like I said, the Jets have really fallen away. Phoenix are a little bit all over the shop. Um, Wanderers might just kind of fall into into sixth place. Um, How does that finals work? Is it third versus sixth? I think it's uh, first and or is it the first and second team play each other? Have a have a week off, do they, or do yeah. they? I, I can't remember that the, the finals has been changed a couple of times. I, th- uh, I thought they skip around and third, like the bottom four play each other, and the third and fourth get the home finals, right? That's. I think you might be right there. Yeah. So basically, yes. Yeah, so, third so, must so, play six. Third, third, and fourth play fifth and sixth in a knockout. Yeah. And then, the, and then the winner of that plays Sydney in, or victory, and then that's it, grand final. Okay. Um, I think. I think that's how it how it goes. Um, there's, there's not many matches in that final series now. It's been changed a couple of times. Originally, you had like two legs in some of them and stuff like that as well. So, um, but surely the loser of the Sydney Mom game are knocked out. Well, and yeah, <sighs> they must drop down into the. And well, it could just be that as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm not I sure. Checked, yeah. I, I'll have I, to. I used to know it, but yeah. It's look. I mean, p- pretty much. I think in the history of the A League, the top two, the winners always been from the top two. Yeah. Um. So that pretty much shows you um how it goes. So yeah. Look. I mean, it's like you said for the glory, especially. I think they really need that home final. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And they're in with a chance. So these next few weeks, at least for for that cluster of teams, it'll be quite interesting. Um. Let's move on to this weekend's game. As we know, it's a uh, split round, so there is only the two games, the Friday and the Saturday night. The Friday night game being Sydney FC at home to Central Coast Mariners. You would expect Sydney FC to uh, soldier on and continue to win. The question mark is, I guess, now that they men- they mentally know that they've won the title, do they switch off a little bit? Does the players care as much as the manager seems to about breaking the record of points? I think that's always been a, a question mark because the- yeah. it's the manager that brings it up, not the players. That's right. Well, look, I mean, I don't think they've shown any signs yet no. um, of anything like that. I think they they do have a, a good resolve and they will keep going. Um, and like you said, the manager's got to kind of throw a few things out there to dangle in front of them to keep them going. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, with with the title thing. all but wrapped up. But like they haven't shown any signs yet. I think this will be an interesting match as well. I think the Mariners will take it to them, to Sydney. Whether that's going to work or not, I'm not sure. But I don't think the Mariners know any other way at the moment. And I think they'll definitely go for it. And it, it'll be interesting to see how Sydney handle that because, you know, the Mariners aren't terrible. You know, where you get the ball to O'Donnell. Donovan, he can put it away. No manager, um, no Izzo, though. Yeah, yeah look, the, the, yeah, the, the backup keeper I don't think is too crash hot. I saw Izzo get linked to Adelaide, strangely. Apparently, yeah, that's that's a, a rumour that's been going around. Um, and I think you'll see a lot of those changes coming up in the A-League. Well, but... if he gives away that red card, he might fit in perfectly next season. <laughs> like... Yeah, look, uh, look and, and again, for Adelaide, uh, you know... <laughs> 
they've got a good keeper in, in Galekovic. Um, I mean, he's getting pretty old, so maybe they are looking for cover. But yeah, um, yeah that that's an interesting one. But um, the Mariners, I think they'll give it a go. They'll give it a go. They they might even snag one against Sydney, but uh, should be a comfortable win for for Sydney in the end at home Friday night again. But you know, I, I'm hoping at least the Mariners can put in a bit of effort and, and make it interesting. They deserve a result after last week, but um, yeah, I, think so. I don't think they'll get it against Sydney. No. Um, no. the big game Saturday night, Melbourne victory, Perth glory. We've spoken about this quite a few times already. Even last week, we mentioned yep. it. Um, Perth typically historically travel well um, to Melbourne. Haven't lost to Melbourne this season against City or victory. Um, mm-hmm. so they'll be confident. Um, what do you think of this game? It's very hard to call. I think this is going to be a cracker. Yeah. I really do. Um, like you said, victory w- I weren't crash hot last weekend. I, I really felt they were a bit flat. I feel um, like this is going to be a repeat of a semi in a couple. Months well, time. yeah, and this this could be a prelude to 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 a finals I clash. So, and yeah. I, I really want to see. I, I want to see victory and, and Melbourne fans actually just see how good Castro is. Um, yeah. And I really want to see Castro put on a show. You think this is um, his last few weeks in Australia? Like five, six it, weeks? Look, it could be. I mean, as good as he's been, the, the, the fact of the matter is it's a long off-season in Australia um, and he's, he's certainly getting on. But with the way he's been the last few weeks, it's like, wow. I mean, maybe he could. You think of the age you'd won the extended holiday, wouldn't you? Well, the, the, yeah, it, it's just fitness, hard right? to yeah. yeah, it's just hard to know like how you how he would come back. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Jeezy's and it even looked like that at the start of this season. But he's just worked up to it, um, and he's just I think he's even better than he was last. What's Kenny Lowe going to have to do for him at the end of this season? He's going to have to cook him some paella. <laughs> I think he's just going to I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like he's a weird Get one, creative. Castro. Yeah. He's he's a weird one because I think as soon as the season wrapped up last season, he was like off to Spain like the next day. Yeah. Like he was gone. You don't and hear anything leaked from him, do you? Like it, uh, he nah. doesn't get linked to other clubs. He's very quiet. I, I really like him. I think, I mean, we, like you said, we don't really know much about him, but I'll give yeah. him credit for that. Like, he's not outspoken. I never see him, like, never really see him Critical. carrying on on the pitch yeah. or anything like that. He's just kind of week in, week job, out, right? does his job. Yeah. But damn, he's good. Fantastic. He's so freaking good. And look, I, I really want to see him turn it on. And that's what I want to see. You know, we, we said like before last week, okay, can, can the glory go to Wellington and get a result? That's a test for them now that they're – you know, in a bit of form, can they go on the road and, and do that? And, you know, yeah, sure, they leaked three goals at the start, but they, they came <laughs> they back did, at yeah. least um, and salvaged something. Should have won, to be fair. To be fair, but this is the real test now. Can they go to victory and, and get something and, and turn it on? Like, have they got what it takes in the big games? Um or, or are tag, the likes of Taggart going to go missing? Yeah, that's a question. Um, and, and is that over-reliance on Castro? Like, I mean, if he gets shut down, because Victory do have a good defensive midfield, don't forget. Yeah, they've they got um, Valeri, they've got Broxham. Um, if they shut Castro down... Victory then, don't really attack through the centre of the midfield either, so, I mean, they're going to be fully on Castro all game. That's right, and then um, it happened with City when when Perth Glory played City. Um, City really used uh, Kamau on on the wing there to uh, attack. Uh, I can't remember who it was for the Glory, um, but basically, I think that could happen again when yeah. you got Rojas now. So they're really going to try and attack them on the on the flanks again there. Um, so this is, this is a big proposition here for Glory. You got Barisha, you got Rojas, um, you got Troisi's red hot. So, and, and like I said, they've got the weapons to counteract guys like, uh, and, you know, through Valerian Broxham, they can counteract Castro. So this is a big test, um, for the Glory. Can they get a result and can they actually do something against a big team? Yeah, I, I fear for the Perth Glory defense. Um, but I actually think Perth Glory can get a result. Uh, it'll be an absolutely wide open game. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it's a three, two, four, three. Yeah, I think so as well. And I think in those types of games, I actually have faith in Perth Glory to respond when they go behind in the game. Yep. We haven't seen victory do that too much. Um, they either go ahead and keep their lead or they, you know, they fall behind and they struggle, especially, um, against the top teams I've noticed. So, I mean, I think Perth Glory will edge it slightly, but I wouldn't be surprised if either team wins it. 
Yeah, look, like I said, I think it'll be wide open. I mean, victory, even if they do take the lead, they're not going to shut up shop, and that'll that'll let Glory get back in it. Um, and by you know, conversely, if Glory take the lead, well, I don't think that's going to stop victory at all either, because they'll still have plenty of chances. So I think it could be a high scoring affair. I give victory the edge just because it's at home. Yeah, but you don't think the um the loss of the title will uh, impact them? At the start, no, potentially? Uh, no, I mean, it could. Um, and certainly Glory probably have a little bit more to play for. But, uh, you know, I, th- I think Melbourne victory at home might just be too strong. But yeah. I-, I think this is going to be a cracker. I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, I, I always back the team with something to play for. I think victory could lose the next three and still make second. So I, I don't think – I think Perth Glory will be extremely hungry. They'll be confident in their trips to Melbourne. And but- I wouldn't be surprised if they win. But they are the glory. They are, they so, are the glory, yeah. I don't know, there's always I, that. <laughs> as much as I despise the Perth Glory defense, like, just watching them, you just feel confident that they'll score. You're, that's and that's and that's the thing. If they could tighten up their defense, geez, exactly. I mean, they, they just yeah. You don't ever think that they won't I score. I wonder as what long the as... players think when they go behind it. They're just like, yeah, we'll score. <laughs> just get the ball just to get Castro. The ball to Castro. We'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it must be reassuring to know that though that they can come back from three goals from two goals. They've done it so many times this season. They have, but I think yeah. Look, I mean, they they prefer not to, oh, but. Of course, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, they've got good. They've got good players in 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 the defence. Um, so I don't know why, but they just seem to switch off mentally. They do. Um, but yeah, uh, look, yeah, they'll they'll back themselves to score. But it's gonna be a big, huge game. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward. There's gonna be a cracker. Yeah, me too. Thankfully, with the split round, we do get this game this week. Because if it was like an Adelaide Brisbane, I'd be pretty disappointed. Um, yeah, that's right. Or Wanderers Wellington next. Yeah, next week's gonna be a bit dire, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna leave the A League there, obviously, because the three games are a week later. Um, let's move on to the Champions League first, because that happened just most recently. Wow. Um, so Arsenal lost 10 to on aggregate um, oh, wow there was protests in the stadium i don't know how um advertised it was from like a, a television standpoint it was before the game there was marches uh arson wenger out stan Kroenke out um obviously well apparently they, yeah. so apparently got overshadowed because Bayern munich fans had their own protests oh, God, of course um, they, they show f- us up on that as well <laughs> that's right yeah yeah that's right they beat, the protest, the, they, they, they beat you on the protest yeah. apparently they, they're not happy with the ticket prices and yeah, they enough, um yeah. douse the whole stadium in toilet paper <laughs> Um, fresh toilet paper. Um, so Arsenal provided the shit. That's right. That's right. So like you said, once again, they upstaged them and then the, the um, Arsenal, maybe Wenger paid off the fans. Possibly. Yeah, Munich is like, I need, I need you guys need to do a, a protest. But um, no, I mean, yeah, t- tell us this. I mean, this is, it's, it feels like, and we've been talking about it for a few weeks, we have, yeah. the Arsenal situation. It feels like it's reaching boiling point. Um, like it's really like there's a wave now. First of all, you had some bad results recently. Um, now you had Sanchez on the bench, which is then revealed that he's had a falling out with Wenger and his teammates. Looks like he's gone. It he's does, gone, I yeah. think. Um, then there's the thing of him on the bench laughing. He even um, had a smile during the, um, the Liverpool game. Yeah, he was I um, think, like smirking, talking to Gabriel in Spanish, and um, yep. he looked like he was enjoying himself. Mm-hmm. And um, I think you can overanalyze the player response. I mean, Alexis is a pretty jovial guy. Yep. Um, clearly, um, him and Arsene Wenger have had a falling out, regardless of what Wenger says. Yep. Um, I think the only thing that will save Alexis at uh, Arsenal, um, ironically, is a new manager because I think it'll take a new manager to convince him to stay. That's right. I mean, and and. Um... You know, for for the whole time he's been at Arsenal, he has been like Mister Arsenal, like he's Definitely embodied the that he's embodied months, yeah. the, the the club, and like all of a sudden the tide has turned. He's worth a lot of money. Clubs want him. He's an he's an awesome player. End of the um, season, he's only on a year left, which makes things difficult for Arsenal. That's right. Same but with I mean, Mesut Ozil, yeah. Well, yeah, and and this is just where you're starting to feel the tide turning against Benga now yeah. from the fans because look, ten ten two against Bayern against anyone um, against anyone. Yeah. I mean, in a Champions League, is it's horrible. But now, if if Sanchez goes on account of uh, Wenger, yeah. 
um, that's that's huge as well. And you know, now if one of your best players leaves, then I, I just feel like it's reaching a crescendo here. Something's got to give soon here. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to fully go into it because I, I think there's podcasts that do it so much better. But like, I don't know if you saw during the week before the um, this was after the Liverpool game before the um, Bayern Munich game, there was like press um, articles. Like the you could tell that the journalist involved was being briefed by the club. And mm. you could tell that they were trying to set an agenda, and the agenda was to make Alexis look like a a brat, look yep. like he was being um undisciplined, that he was forcing the um the problem, and it wasn't from Arsene Wenger's side. And I feel like if that is coming from the club, like obviously you don't know hundred percent, but if it is, then I find it so like disappointing that like Arsene Wenger can escape criticism, um, can escape pressure, and then you just throw these like world class players under the bus to try to get fans to focus on something else. Yeah, and and look, and that's where you know, I mean, like you said, if 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 the story is that he's had a falling out or at training with the squad and stuff like that, then like like I said, why why is he on the bench? If like, there's if one he, club that could use a shake up in the player group, it's freaking Arsenal. Yeah, and and it seems and, so casual. Like the culture is so passive and so tentative. Well, like, it's, it, yeah, it's it's like the whole club basically yeah. just rock up for the paycheck. Exactly, rock up for the paycheck, finish fourth, and uh, yeah, see you next season. And do you think you they're know, shipping it in like you see all Leicester players did? I feel like the yeah. players are shipping it in. Well, uh, they are because yeah. I mean, look, there's 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 definitely a, a lack of quality in the squad. Um, that's one. But two is that it is a bit of that complacency. Um, and like I said, we don't, we, they just almost like Wenger's like just that kind of guy where you can push those buttons and he'll just ignore it. So I don't know, maybe he was trying to make a stand here or something like that. But yeah. wouldn't you just, A, if you, if you were really trying to discipline a player, wouldn't you just omit him from the squad yeah, fully. and, and him find bench, him or like, something like what that? What happens? I'm talking about Liverpool, Liverpool game here, but he comes yeah. on the whole whole team improves he scores a goal Arsenal come back maybe um some non-dodgy refereeing decisions and Arsenal could have undeservedly drawn the game could have perhaps That's right. won I think the talking points still remain the same so I don't use that as an excuse but I think if you bring Alexis on and he has that impact that gives Alexis more ammunition it's like look you guys are shit without me like so That's right. you can drop me all you want but this is what the team looks like so if you're gonna make that statement then you take him out of the squad yeah, that's right. Yeah, either you take him out of the squad because sitting him on the bench while your team's getting pumped just makes you look like a fool. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so either you can go, look, he's he's being an idiot, but oh, we want to, we need to win this game, and he's our best player, so he's starting. Or you go, he's an idiot. And, you know, like, I mean, when, you know, West Ham had that situation with Payet, they were just, he, that's they it. He's it. out. Yeah. He's out. And that's it. And he's being a brat. He's out. The whole, and that kind of rallied the squad around him. It did, yeah. So this is kind of like Wenger. I, I, look, I don't know what's going on, but it feels like it, it's something's happening here. Like the tide is just turning against him. He he's uh, he's under big pressure now. This is this is getting big now. Yeah, it's um depressing because I just still think that he's going to sign a new contract. So yeah, I'm well, well sure. yeah. the contract's on the table. Why it wouldn't is, he? Yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. Um, yeah. What else do you think? Like Champions League games, is, I think the best night of fixtures are tonight. Dortmund, Benfica, um, Benfica leading one 0 in that tie, and um, Barcelona have a huge job ahead of them to come back from four goals against PSG. Yeah. Um, do you think Barcelona have any chance at home? Have to score that's pretty much five, you'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no, there's nothing to say that they can't turn it around and win four 0 at home themselves yeah. or or more. I mean, look, they've been there, they've done that. They are Barcelona, um, and they do have a guy called Messi. But <laughs> I they, can't they, see they, it. They, they, this is like the back against the wall for them. So it'll be interesting to see how they respond. I think it's going to be a huge game, um, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of tactics. Paris go in with yeah exactly um, I think they'll still the, attack personally are they just going to attack and I keep going and try and, and try and really really put a stamp on it and, well, and beat Barcelona once, I mean, again Barcelona have to score f- uh, six so I mean that's game over that's that's right, but yeah. you know, by the same token, if you know, if Barca get one or two early, then the game changes, yeah. Or you know, the jitters start coming yeah, out, does, and yeah, and and PSG haven't. Been. So this is a real tough one. If you're if you're the manager here, like, what do you do? Do you 
you know, you start out defensive and then all of a sudden you started out too defensive from the get go and you keep getting deeper and deeper. Can you defend, you know, and, and why would you? You've got a four goal lead, but, you know, it, really tough one. I think there's, like I said, going to be a cracker of a game tonight, that one. Um, yeah, uh, could go either way. I, I, too tough for me to call, I reckon. But yeah. if you're confident, PSG will, yeah, will get the points. I think that's that's huge for them, then, isn't it? Yeah, it's a new PSG, and I think um, Barcelona will have a proper crack. And I wouldn't surprise if they won like a three-one scoreline or something. But um, but not enough. Four goals very difficult, especially when you don't get the away goal. It makes things far more complicated. That's right. Yeah, yep. um, I think that could be the reason why Dortmund may struggle tonight because I think they'll win, but. Benfica score once and this game becomes very interesting. So I mean we could yeah. have two big clubs out of the the CL in the first um round of sixteen. So yeah. look forward to that. Um else for the weekend we've got the FA Cup. Uh I don't know if you want to go through and predict the games, but um I think essentially Man City will win. Arsenal versus Lincoln becomes interesting because um Lincoln aren't as bad as people make them out to be. Um, oh, look, I think it's huge. I think yeah. that's a huge game now because, again, selection headaches about Sanchez. Um, and I just think there's just all this brouhaha around the club. I wouldn't be surprised if Lincoln get a draw here or something like that and force a replay. I couldn't imagine um, what would happen if that was to occur. I really couldn't. Like, yeah, I, I just have that feeling like yeah, this, so yeah. there's, there's an upset here. And, Again, like I don't want to harp on about it, but if there was a team that would go down to a side like this, it is Arsenal in these kind of moments. Potentially, yeah. Um, I, look, I don't know what the mood of the squad is like, but from the outside looking in, the heat is really on. Um, but you know, by the same token, they could just pump them five nil. Like it's it's uh, hard to say, but I think it'll make for interesting viewing. Um, Chelsea, Man United, obviously that one's that's a huge Are game you as well. At Chelsea. Well, uh, is Ibra suspended for that? He is, right? Um, he got a three-game suspension, but is that EPL only? No, it's is English, that, right? Isn't it FA it's, Cup it's, included? Yeah. yeah, right. So, no, no, Ibra, that's going to that's gonna be tough. Um, and look, Chelsea are just uh, red hot. I think um, Chelsea will win. I think so, too. I mean, Mourinho would, would love it, but I think without Ibrahimovic, it's going to be tough for them. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll put my hand up and say, I, I, I thought he'd be good in the EPL, but I didn't think he'd be this good. Ibra? Yeah. Yeah, look, like, I, I thought he'd score goals. So there was no question, but I thought, like, say, like, pretty much where we are now, March, April, I thought, like, the fatigue of this league and how quick and consistent the games are, mm. that he'd just run out of legs. But, you know, a credit to him, he's been incredible. Yeah, and, and, and credit to him, he, he's taken on the challenge because he's got the reputation. He didn't have to come to nah, the EPL, I guess. He could have yeah. he could have gone to China and picked up millions as well. Um, but, you know, he's come here and, like I said, he's proved himself. And I'll give Man United and Mourinho and Ibrahimovic, I'll give them all credit because um, with how they started off the season, we thought, here we go again, disaster for United. Yeah. But they really turned it around and, you know, they could um, – Walk away with you know they could be in a in a cup final soon and um, get top but, four. I think the, and, um, the and fourth get top spot four. is between Arsenal, United, and Liverpool. So I mean it's a big big teams. Yeah, and big, I think yeah. Um, right now maybe Man United are favourites just because they seem to be more consistent than the other two. So. That's right. Yeah, I mean Liverpool. Liverpool on their day are on fire, but um, against they, a lot they, of teams they struggle. Yeah. yeah, they they do, and Man United just have a little bit more consistency. So uh, I agree. think uh, Tottenham Millwall will be an interesting um, one as well. Um, but Kane Kane is just red hot at the moment. I think he should get Tottenham over the line in that one. Yeah, quality player, but him and his handshake need to like go to the moon. Did you see that between no, no. Deli Ali and? Uh, Harry Kane. It was what like happened? a twenty-five second like handshake, you know, that little like flicks of the knuckles, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah well, that's that's <laughs> just EPL douchebaggery for you, isn't Pretty it? Much. They probably spent like, all week in training working on Re- that rehearsing well. that. Yeah. Look, um, look, I don't mind. A, I don't mind a coordinated goal celebration. No, yeah, me but either. A, but the handshake's a, a little. A handshake, yeah, it's a bit, a bit wanky. Bit cliche for me. <laughs> Um, I normally would go through the EPL with it, with you and discuss a few of the games, but it's such a short um, round of uh, EPL as well, ironically the same as the A-League. So, I mean, for football, it's um, going to be a, a barren week, weekend. Um, yeah, there's only what about seven or eight games between England and um, the A-League, so... That's, yeah, I don't know. What are we going to do this weekend? Eh? Let's <laughs> try and find something else to... Uh... <laughs> 
something else to, to be interested in. But yeah, I still I think the the games that are on I think are at least good. Yeah. Um, there's some interesting fixtures there. Like I said, victory victory glory I think is huge. Um, game of the weekend, I, th- I think. EPL I think included, so. Yeah, yeah maybe the Chelsea Man United game, but that's on the Tuesday, which is yeah, not really the weekend. Chelsea, yeah, I, I, I and just, I just really Arsenal, Lincoln City. I think just because you can't, the you know, it could be a, it point. could be a car crash. So yeah. I'll, I'll watch that one. I think so. That'll be interesting. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we'll leave it there, uh, Eden. Uh, thank you for joining me once again. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. You can find us at www.theaverageaustralian.com. You can also find this podcast on iTunes, YouTube, on the Patreon, on SoundCloud, on uh, – where else is it? All over the internet. All over the internet. Just Google us. Just Google us. You'll find us, hopefully. SEO, don't let us down. Um, so <laughs> we'll see all you guys next week. We'll talk about the A-League, and we'll discuss the second half of this round. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.